Hello, so today uh, it's going to be a video just about Alibre, but um, you might have heard me talk about uh, Alibre in a recent interview and saying that Alibre has got their own horsepower, right? So let's, uh, let's do a little demonstration. Let's do a burnout. Um, so this is going to be the equivalent of a burnout in a Libre, right? So let's let's make some magic happen. Um, of course, there's no magic involved here. It's just a feature that I really, really love. <clears throat> and um, it, it allows the designer to be very creative. And uh, it allows for, uh, for shapes and... and uh, and uh, geometry to be designed that uh, would be really hard to design otherwise and it also allows it to be designed uh, relatively quickly right so I'm just going to make two lines here All right I want them to start and end at the same oh no 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 uh, I want to start and end at the same point, right, vertically. I want these to be reference. Of course, you could have gone to convert to reference figures, but I have uh, hotkeyed that command, right, and this is going to be 10 millimeters from the top. That's D4. So D4. Don't care about that. D4, and then let's also do here D4, and then I want to specify this dimension as 50, okay? So, so by changing this dimension, I can bring the two lines closer or further apart, and, and this, this will control the angle, right? So what I'm going to do now is this. I'm going to create an up here. And I'm going to say that this is horizontal and that this belongs to this line. I'm, I want to start. <laughs> Come on. Oh, that didn't work. Okay, let's give it a value first. So I want to uh, dimension the diameter here. The way you do that, so by default, if you uh, try to dimension an arc, a liberal is going to give you the radius. Uh, if you hold shift, right, and move the uh, the dimension around a bit, you'll see that this square becomes slightly larger. That's a visual confirmation that you're getting the diameter, right? So let's give it a diameter of 15, and I want this to be vertical with that point, and I want this. Okay, I mean, okay, so we've defined that, right? We have defined that. Um, and now, what I'm going to do now, ah, sorry, um, I also need this angle to be a, a, uh, a parameter, right? I need that driven dimension of the angle to be a parameter. Okay. So let's say, okay, through all, I'm going to make another sketch. I want to bring this in as reference figures. Okay. So let's make another one. And I want these to be equal. I want, of course, the center to be on this line. I want them to be, yep. And I guess I can make it tangent. Yeah, that, that'd be fine. So that's fully defined now, right? Um, Instead of making this tangent, I could have said that this point is on this... Uh, yeah, I will think I'll do that. It'll make more sense dimensionally. Again, this is different design intent, right? But uh, it'll, it will still um, show what I'm trying to do. Okay? Cool. So now, we're going to pattern this uh, along this line. Right, so this is C1, and now I'm going to use my ultimate pattern fill <laughs> uh, equation. You can find that in another one of my videos. 
So the full length is D1. I want to subtract from that the, um, the length of this feature projected to that line, which is actually the uh, diameter I gave it, so that's D9. Okay. I also want to subtract twice the distance from the edge, which is D4. Oh, wait, it's not D4. It's D4 minus the radius, so D9 divided by 2. Okay, now I'm going to divide that by C1 squared minus C1. Okay, so there's an error here. Ah, yeah, I forgot to close the second parenthesis. Okay. So we, we've got a value here. If I hit OK, you'll see that what it does is it goes there and mirrors it, basically. And as I add instances, it distributes them equally along that line, right? So let's do 11. Okay. So now I'm going to make this, right? I want to... Oh, right, I forgot. Let's go to sketch 2, right? And I want to make an axis along this second line because that is the axis I'm going to follow now for that second pattern, right? So I want to pattern this. I want to pattern it along that axis. But I want these to be directly below uh, the initial pattern. So first of all, this is going to be C1. I need the same amount of um, instances. And then I'm going to go here and I'm going to say that this is D12. So the distance, um, I used my equation to calculate, right? divided by the cosine of what? The cosine of that driven uh, angle dimension, which is A1. A1. Okay. And now that is uh, slightly larger, that's what we want. Because now, these two patterns are directly below each other, right? They're a straight line below each other. Uh, and the, the number of instances is driven by the first pattern. That's important, right? As is the, the patterning distance, it's a derived value. So let's hit OK. And now it's time for the magic, right? Now it's time to do the burnout. So I'm going to sketch here. I'm just going to <clears throat> project this entire face. And I'm going to extrude cut up to next. Okay, and what did I get? I got a slot here. Okay, I got a slot. So now I want a linear pattern, that little slot, right? And along this distance, you see what? You see what's happening here? I want to do C1. Okay. And then for the patterning distance, I want to say that this is precisely the distance for the initial one, right? And look what is going to happen. Hey, it's patterning the distance from one semicircle to the other and it's creating slots. And these slots, right, they are uh, parametrically uh, controlled. So if I go and take that 50 millimeter measurement, right, if I make this smaller, let's say 20 millimeters, right, it, it follows it. So basically what we have here, what we've got here is a variable length slot pattern, okay? And the reason for that is because we used the app to next in the uh, cat extrude. It's patterning, along with uh, the shape, it's also patterning the app to next command, okay? And uh, that way we get this beautiful variable slot pattern, right? But there's, a, there's a, an even uh, better trick, right? So let's get another file going. Okay, so, so we can take that uh, same trick and we can take it a step further. 
let's do 300. Uh, let's do 120, and I'm gonna make this vertical. Okay, full constraint, five millimeters. Okay, and look what I'm going to do now, right? I'm gonna go here, and I'm just going to make a 3.0. I'll make this horizontal, okay? So this is now tangent to the vertical. I'll make this vertical, so, okay, let's go in. So this point now is tangent to the horizontal, this, this edge. Um, it's just the way I want to create the arc, non-consequential at this point. So this is D4 again, cool. And, uh, yeah. D4, not D4, D4. What? What in the name am I pressing here? Okay, now let's give this a large value. Let's say that it is 300. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm going to ignore that for now. I'll just, uh, plane on path, I'm just going to make a plane there. And uh, I'm going to sketch on that plane. I'm going to make a cut. Okay. And let's see that this is 15 millimeters. Okay. And now I'm going to, uh, no, yeah, not yet. So I'm going to sweep this, but not yet, right? I want to do another thing. I want to, um, at a point here, right? I want to make that point. Well, I'm just going to dimension it. D4 divided by 2, right? I don't want this to be right on the same spot. Uh, you, you will see why. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create an axis from a point on sketch. Oh, sorry. I'm going to insert axis. I'm going to select this point, and it knows that I want to. I want to make an axis that's vertical to that plane. Okay, and if you see now, here's our axis fully defined. So I'm going to create a plane. Then I'm going to say I'm selecting this axis. I'm selecting the ZX plane, and I want this to be at the 30 degree angle to the ZX plane and go through this little axis. Okay, 30 degrees now, that's too much. I don't want this plane to go out of my little plate. So I'll say 15 degrees. And that's fine. Okay, let's hide everything. And now we're going to do a sweep, cut sweep. I want to select this as the sketch to sweep and my path is going to be this. Of course, this cuts all the way Right, but what I can do then is I'm going to say two geometry and I'm going to select this last little plane that I made and it stops there. Okay, that's cool enough. Now let's pattern this. That extrusion on this. Okay, so let's uh, let's use our equation again. So this is D1 minus. This uh, this length here, which is I'm sketch three. This is not D four. Uh, that's gotta be sketch three then. Sketch three. Uh, yeah. So D seven minus D seven minus twice uh, D four, which is the distance from the edge. Okay. And then I'm going to divide this. C1 squared minus C1. Again, uh, this equation, uh, you can find any, I've made an entire video explaining how to make this equation. Okay. So, look what it did, all right? It basically kind of mirrored it, right? And as I add instances, it adds them in here, right? So, yeah. but they're all the same thing, right? And now, okay, this is going to be magic. Abracadabra, I 
uncheck this little checkbox and look what it did. Man, <laughs> is that great? Uh, as soon as you uncheck pattern geometry, it doesn't pattern the geometry as it is. What it does is it patterns the conditions that created that initial geometry, right? And that's how you get another nice little vent um, pattern, right? And uh, let's be a bit cheeky. Let's be a bit cheeky here. Let's delete these vertical uh, constraints. Let's make that, yeah. And this way. <laughs> cool. Yeah, let's give that an offset of six millimeters. And now oh, that's cool, isn't it? That's real cool. So, yeah, that's uh, the horsepower I was talking about. That's uh, what you can do uh, with the Libre. Uh, it's got great implementation of uh, design intent. And if you use it correctly, you can do some really, really magic stuff happen. Okay. So, uh, yeah, that's it for Libre for today. I hope you liked it. Uh, if you did, subscribe. More of these videos coming your way. Uh, if you liked it, hit the like button. And if you didn't like it, hit the dislike button because I still uh, want to know. And please let me know what you made with this little uh, trick. Uh, I'd be I'd be glad to know that you made something using this little trick I showed you. So that's it. I hope I see you in the next one.